Hey there, want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. And here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are available on Spotify as well. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for podcasters, I've been able to reach more listeners as well as start earning advertising revenue. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Hey there, how are you? I hope you are doing fantabulous. Today, we are going to be talking about how to deal with difficult customers. Oi, I feel like we have all been there and know the challenge, so stay with me. You are listening to the Career Talk Learn, Grow, Thrive podcast, where we talk about all things career related. I tell you how it is and we get right to the point. I am your host, Stephanie Dennis, and my background is in HR, which is what I have my master's degree in. And my passion is helping others, sharing my knowledge, and doing that so others can make positive changes in their lives. So here we are. This is a good time to mention this podcast does contain adult language. All right, dealing with difficult customers. Ugh, let's be real. This can be super challenging and sometimes simply just annoying. <laughs> Let's be honest, dealing with those difficult customers, maybe annoying customers, maybe needy customers, like whatever it might be. And as we've talked about in previous episodes, everyone has a customer, whether it's internal or external. But we all are working or serving someone else in our role. So your job should solve a problem or maybe you're creating revenue for someone or another team. Maybe it is a company that's your customer. Maybe it is actual customers, like maybe you have a store and you have actual customers coming in, or maybe it's simply other people within your organization who are your customer. And dealing with difficult customers can be really challenging. So for example, in the recruiting space, so my customer is my hiring manager as well as the candidates that I work with, right? So here are 21 tips that I have for you for dealing with difficult customers. Number one, make sure that we understand their goals and their objectives. So oftentimes customers may get upset or frustrated if they don't understand that you understand (laughs) what they're trying to do. So for example, in the recruiting space, there could be a hiring manager who really needs to hire 10 data scientists in the next like month or two, super, super fast, super, super high level roles. And they need to do that because it is November and starting January 1st, they're taking on this super huge client and they need these people like butts in seats ready to go. That's the goal. As a recruiter, I need to understand that and I need to make sure they know that I understand the urgency behind what we're trying to do. Because if you think about recruiting, it's like, okay, great, we have two months to do this, but reality is we have one month to do that because background checks, onboarding, training, someone giving their notice, like a month is really what you have to make that happen, right? So letting your customers know, hey, I understand the goals we're working towards. I hear you. I got you. Here's what we're doing, et cetera, et cetera, which leads really well into number two, amping up your communication, letting them know, again, you get it. You understand. Here's what we're doing. Here's the struggles. Here's what we're doing to overcome those struggles. Here's what we're doing to try something different. Like here's what we're doing to be creative, et cetera, et cetera but also making it more of a team effort, especially in recruiting. This could probably apply to most roles is making sure that you're working together with your customers. So it's like, okay, you know, customer so-and-so, here's what I'm doing. But then also saying, here's a few things you could be doing to try and hire these 10 data scientists in the next four weeks, right? Number three, 
show that you care, this will go a long way and it's not hard. (laughs) If you have a vested interest in your job and you enjoy what you do, showing people that you care is pretty easy. A lot of it is listening to them, understanding, communicating, but just genuinely showing that you give a damn will build rapport quicker than a lot of other things. Number four, help your customers reach their goals. Going back to number one, of course, letting them know you understand those goals, but also actually helping them reach those goals. So again, we'll use my example. Hey, we're hiring 10 data scientists in the next 30 days so everybody can start by January 1st and help out this huge client that we just took on, blah, 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 right? So again, here's what we're doing to reach those goals. Here's what you can be doing to help reach those goals. Everyone is helping to reach those goals. Number five, listen, listen, listen. I cannot stress this enough. Listening to your customers, active listening. (laughs) Make sure they know that you are listening and that you hear them. If you think about our own relationships with our friends, with our families, with our partner, one thing personally that drives me absolutely bananas is if I am talking and whoever I'm talking to is not listening. Like that will send me into like Looney Tune land faster than most other things. (laughs) One, I know you can't tell from the podcast, but I am typically more of like the person person who sits back and kind of listens before I engage in conversation, right? So if there's like five people around the table, I'll tend to be a little bit more quiet out of the gate and then I'll start to engage in conversation. So when I am actually talking and people aren't listening, I'm like, oh, like I just want to scream. I want to scream in your ear because I'll hurt, but... <laughs> Okay, well, it makes me want to scream. Same with your customers. If you're not listening to them, they're going to want to scream and maybe yell and get super mad. It does nothing to help build a really good relationship. Number six, hit your goals and your KPIs. So oftentimes the goals that your company sets for you and the KPIs that you're told that you need to hit are going to help you assist in getting your customers' goals met. So make sure that you're hitting their goals, of course, and you're helping them reach their goals. Make sure you're also hitting your own goals. Number seven, under promise, over deliver. This is like, uh, I don't even know, like rule of thumb as old as time, right? Like, (laughs) I don't even know who originally said it, but essentially make sure that you deliver on what you say you're going to, but then try and go above and beyond and don't ever promise something you can't deliver on. Number eight, ask for feedback. Number nine is give feedback. So feedback's really important. So making sure that we are asking for feedback. Is there anything I can do better? Is there anything I can improve on? How do you think things are going between us? Blah, blah, blah. And then also giving feedback, right? Typically, if you're asking for feedback in that type of situation, every time I've done it um, with a customer and not like my manager, right? They have always said, hey, is there anything I can be doing different? Is there anything, you know, I can do to help make the recruiting process different? If you're asking for feedback in my case from a hiring manager, more often than not, they're going to ask how they can help and do things different as well. So eight and nine, ask for the feedback, give the feedback. Super important. Feedback is everything because you could be thinking you need to improve on 10 different things and they're like, hey, I just really need a daily update from you. And you're like, that's it? (laughs) And here you are like trying to conquer the world. It's kind of a calibration, right? Just making sure everybody's on the same page. Number 10, take notes. Taking notes is really important. So you want to take notes so you don't forget get anything first and foremost. (laughs) I have a pretty forgetful memory, so I try and take as many notes as possible when I'm talking to one of my customers, but I also want to make sure that I'm documenting the conversations we're having. Not in like a weird HR, I have to document this type of conversation, like not at all like that, but just so we can see trends, if things change. You know, maybe the hiring manager needs to hire 10 data scientists in the next 30 days, and they're asking for people who have 27 years of experience, a doctorate degree, no one junior, blah, 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 right? So maybe that's where we start. And then a few days go by and we have absolutely no progress. We need to shift and pivot quickly so we can go back to that original conversation and say, hey, hiring manager, I know you said you needed, you know, this laundry list of shit. (laughs) 
How about we start looking at this kind of profile? Based on the data I've pulled, this type of profile is going to yield us quicker results or we need to adjust our goal, right? So if we're going to stick to this original list of items that you say you need, I need to let you know this is probably going to take more like six months versus 30 days to hire these 10 folks. So more so documenting the conversation so you can reference it back and be able to have those communication and updates. And if we need to pivot, we need to pivot. Number 11, keeping the critical emails. Again, not in like an HR weird kind of way to get somebody in trouble, (laughs) but just to make sure we have the information we need, right? So in the last role that I had, oftentimes our uh, VP of sales would send out these like really elaborate, super amazing emails about kind of what the team was doing and like quick updates, or maybe just new teams were built and here's going to be the structure and the breakdown. And so I, of course, saved every single one of those because that was really good information for me to be able to pivot back to and reference back to when I was one talking to candidates about what we're doing. When I was talking to my team about what we were doing, we were talking to, you know, the hiring managers about what was going on. So keeping the critical emails that have that good information. Number 12, prove that you are there to help. So oftentimes, I don't want to say often, and sometimes when we are dealing with customers, the person that they were dealing with before they got to you may not have done a very good job, right? So we may need to prove that you are there to help them, that you know what you're doing, that you're good at your job, and you got this. You can tell them, but if they've had a bad experience in the past, they're going to need you to prove it to them. Number 13, grant the requests when you are able. <laughs> right? There are some very easy requests that customers ask for that may not be quote unquote the norm, but it's really easy to just say, yeah, absolutely. We can do that for you. So when customers are asking you for things, if you can do it, do it. Number 14, do what you say you will do. (laughs) Very simple, right? Basic follow through. If you say you're going to do something, do it. I know it's such an easy concept, but so many times people say they're going to do things and they don't and they let people down. Number 15, Keep a level head. If you have a customer who's really difficult, they're really challenging, they are probably upset, make sure that you are keeping your cool, right? You're keeping a level head. You're not matching their frustration or their anger or their outburst. Number 16, do not procrastinate. (laughs) As the sometimes queen of procrastination. Don't procrastinate. If you have to do something that sucks, that is not fun, just get it out of the way right away. This goes back to, you know, Brian Tracy's eat that frog. So his theory is whatever is like the hard crappy thing you need to do each and every single day, eat the frog, do it right away in the morning, get it done, get it out of the way so you can just crush the rest of your day. Number 17, offer suggestions and make recommendations. So a customer relationship is going to be much more valuable when you can say, hey customer, here's what we're trying to do here's what we're doing to get to your goals. Here's what I recommend in addition to, right? So maybe something that is not necessarily on the regular to-do list or the norm, but maybe it's an outside the box idea or something you guys haven't tried yet. Or maybe something, maybe it's just different in general. I don't know, but making those recommendations, making those suggestions is going to go a long way in building that relationship. Number 18, share examples and best practices. So if they're not necessarily understanding something, say, oh, for example, here's what we did with customer two, right? Here's what we did with customer one. Here's how this played out for them. So maybe it's best practices. Maybe it's an example. Maybe it is a case study that your company did, but sharing that so you are not only helping your customer, but really being that advisor to them. Number 19, don't argue and don't get defensive. It is, well, it could be. (laughs) It's likely not your fault why they're upset. If it is, own it for sure. Apologize, fix it, move on. But if someone is upset and they're coming at you and they're mad and they're arguing, the last thing that's going to help diffuse that situation is you matching that anger, getting defensive, and arguing with them back. So don't do it. Save yourself the headache, the hassle, the conversation with your boss. (laughs) 
(laughs) Don't do it. Number 20, trust your gut. We get gut feelings for a reason and learning to trust those is really, really important. And number 21, set boundaries when needed. So sometimes we need to set boundaries, right? Not always, but sometimes. So I know there has been situations where hiring managers will email me at like 11 o'clock at night and then at 7 (laughs) a.m. they forward the same email and they're like, question mark or like, what are your thoughts? And it's like, okay. (laughs) Sometimes I'm on email super early, or sometimes I may be on email super late, but this isn't the norm for me. So my boundary is that my hiring managers give me at least half of a business day to respond before they send a follow-up message. And if it's super, super important, they all have my cell phone number. They can call, they can text, they can do what they need to do to track me down. (laughs) All right. I hope you found this episode helpful and valuable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time being here, listening to the show. I really do appreciate it. You can find more information in the show notes below or at stephdennis13.com. If you want to learn how we can work together, head over to listen to careertalk.com for more information. And if you want to check out the store for the podcast, it's super exciting. Head over to careertalkswag.com. And if you want to help support the show, you can do so via PayPal or or Anchor. Both of the links are below, or you can also support the show shopping in the store. If you are enjoying the show, please take a moment, leave a rating and or review. Really does help, and I genuinely love reading them, so thank you to everyone who has done that. I so very much appreciate it. You can reach out to me on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at StephDennis13, and then the podcast directly at Career Talk Podcast on Instagram, as well as LinkedIn. We are written, produced, hosted, and edited by yours truly. You are are simply amazing. I hope you have a beautiful, lovely rest of your day.